Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News. I'm Tracy Shilshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting you through the day's top stories, what to look forward to. Let's start with the headlines. Government moves amendment to change income tax law in Lok Sabha. Undisclosed income holders will be required to pay a 30% tax, penalty of 10% and a surcharge of 33%. RBI relaxes withdrawal limits for deposits made in the new currency. Government slashes levies on point-of-sale machines following a spurt in demand. Haryana and Punjab leaders meet President over the Satlej Yamuna link canal controversy. Haryana appeals for his intervention while Punjab asserts it's right over the water. Attacker who injured 11 people in a rampage at the Ohio State University in the U.S. is shot dead, identified as an 18-year-old youth of Somali descent. And U.S. President-elect Donald Trump threatens to end the U.S. thaw with Cuba unless a better deal is worked out as several world leaders decide to skip Fidel Castro's funeral in Havana. Well, top story, the opposition protests over demonetization remain unabated in the upper house even on Monday. Opposition parties reiterated their demand for the prime minister's presence in the house and accused the government of causing hardships to the people. The government uh, was of course quick to blame the opposition for the disruption. No business could be transacted as the standoff stalled proceedings. The demonetization issue continued to trigger protests putting the opposition and the government at loggerheads in the upper house of parliament. The opposition continued to insist on the prime minister's presence in the house and voice concern over the miseries and deaths allegedly caused by the decision. Manne Pradhan Mantri ji, agar kabhi bhi is tarah ki badi announcement karte hai, sunye, to house, house jab bhi milta hai, to Pradhan Mantri statement dete hai. ये पहली दफा हुआ कि इतनी बड़ी अनाउंसमेंट के बाद प्रधानमंत्री ने न इस हाउस में न दूसरे सदन में कोई स्टेटमेंट दिया है ये पहली बात दूसरी ये बात है इसलिए डिस्कशन शुरू कर रहे हो प्रधानमंत्री इसलिए इसीलिए हमारी मांग पहले दिन से है कि चर्चा दोनों सदनों में होनी चाहिए लेकिन जिस नेता ने जिस लीडर ने अनाउंसमेंट की है वो मौजूद होना चाहिए क्योंकि आम तौर पर यह बताया जाता है कि कैबिनेट को मालूम नहीं था वित्त मंत्री को मालूम नहीं था किसी को मालूम नहीं था जब किसी को भी नहीं मालूम था तो जिसको मालूम नहीं था तो वो कैसे सवाल जवाब दे सकता है Sir, where is the Prime Minister? You ask your colleagues to discuss. Yes, I have all my points. I, I have all my points. I want to know where is the Prime Minister to answer. Leading the government's charge, MOS for Parliamentary Affairs, Mukhtar Bas Nakfi, slammed the opposition parties for derailing the business of the House, reiterating that the Prime Minister's fight against corruption and black money was far from over. Nakfi stressed that Prime Minister Modi will make an intervention during the debate on demonetization. <laughs> और ये लोग माफी किस बात के लिए मांग रहे हैं प्रधानमंत्री इसलिए माफी मांगे कि काले धन के कुबेर कंगाल हो गए हैं इसलिए माफी मांगे कि जो भ्रष्टाचार है अभी शुरू कर रहे हैं इसलिए माफी मांगे कि देश के डिस्कशन ना हो देश के कमजोर तबकों के सशक्तिकरण के लिए जरूरी है आप दोनों एग्री the BSP, TMC and Congress members trooped into the well of the house demanding the prime minister's response BJP members also moved to the aisles and resorted to sloganeering against the opposition as the chair tried to broker truce. My dear honorable lady member, please, please, Sunye, Sunye, yes, Sunye, you are saying that there is anger for the people. The best way to express anger is to resume the discussion. Best way to resume the discussion. Assertion failed to pacify the agitated members. The stalemate washed away zero hour and question hour. 
As the war efforts escalated, the chair adjourned the house till 2 p.m. Even the post lunch session brought no respite. As the opposition and treasury benches part, the chair adjourned the house till Tuesday. With inputs from Vishal Dhaya and Panchanan Mishra, Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. And a united opposition continued its protests in Lok Sabha as well, forcing adjournment of proceedings for the day on Monday. The government once again pressed for a debate, but the opposition parties remain firm on their stand, demanding discussion under an adjournment motion. Lok Sabha proceedings made little progress amid continued protests by the opposition on the demonetization issue. Over 30 members from the Congress, Trinamool Congress, AIA DMK and the left parties trooped into the well demanding a debate under an adjournment motion. Seeking to break the deadlock, Home Minister Rajnath Singh told the House that the government is ready for a debate. He also assured that the Prime Minister will speak on the issue. Many opposition leaders, including Malikarjun Kharge, Sudhi Bandhopadhyay, and Mulayam Singh Yadav, pressed for acceptance of their demand for a discussion under Rule 56 that entails voting. The speaker, however, declined their request. Prime Minister Sadan mein aaye, adjournment motion ko swikar kare, aur humko baat karne ke liye aap sammati de. They try to find out a way that how we can come to a solution that the discussion takes place. We can put our observation on the floor, let Prime Minister reply, and a healthy debate takes place. Agar ye kahe Pramanti aakar ke itne mehatpur sabar par bhi nahi aaye, to Sadan ka kya mehatpur unki man mein? पूरा देश चिंतित है पूरे देश में ये हालत है कि खेत बोए नहीं जा रहे हैं ये बता रहे हैं हमारी गृहमंत्री इट इज रियली द ड्यूटी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट टू रन द हाउस बेटर द चेयर आल्सो कैन एडवाइज द गवर्नमेंट टू हैव द डिस्कशन वी आर नॉट अगेंस्ट द डिस्कशन बट यू सी दैट देयर वेयर नंबर ऑफ इंस्टेंसेस इन दिस हाउस इटसेल्फ व्हेन सच ए सीरियस इश्यूज आर कमिंग द गवर्नमेंट कम फॉरवर्ड ये लोग दिक्कतें में झेल रहे हैं एवरी डे Every day people are suffering and for this there is a need to find a way out. There is a need for the government also to take suggestions from the opposition. Speaker Sumitra Mahajan tried to conduct the questionnaire but as the din continued, she adjourned the house till noon and later till 2 p.m. Lok Sabha has been witnessing disruptions over the demonetization issue ever since the winter session started on November 16th. With Ravindra Singh and Pranav Goswami, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley tabled the Income Tax Act Amendment Bill in Lok Sabha on Monday to penalize bank deposits made after the 8th of November. According to the bill, a declarant has to pay 30% tax on undisclosed income plus a 10% penalty. Additionally, a 33% surcharge will be levied on the tax amount. Further, the declarants have to deposit 25% of the undisclosed income in a scheme to be notified by the government in consultation with the RBI. Money from the scheme will then be used for projects in irrigation, housing, toilets, infrastructure, primary education, primary health and livelihood so that there is justice and equality. Those who continue to hold on to undisclosed cash, existing provisions of the income tax law will be amended to provide for a flat 60% tax plus a surcharge of 25% of tax which will amount a levy of 75%. Assessing officers can also charge a 10% penalty in addition to that 75% tax. Madam Speaker, I rise to move for leave of the House to introduce the Taxation Laws Second Amendment Bill 2016 listed in today's supplementary list of business. The question is that leave be granted to introduce the bill. Those in favour may say aye. Those against may say no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. The leave is the minister may now introduce the Meanwhile, the RBI has relaxed withdrawal limits for deposits made in legal tender, and this has been done to encourage people to deposit valid currency notes in banks. 
If someone deposits valid legal tenders of Rs 2,500, 100, 50, 20, 10 or 5 of 4,000 rupees, then the person's withdrawal limit will rise by 4,000 rupees above the weekly withdrawal limit of 24,000 rupees. For current account holders, the withdrawal limit is 50,000 rupees a week for small traders. In a late evening circular, the Reserve Bank said that it has been reported that certain depositors are hesitating to deposit their funds into bank accounts in view of the current limits on cash withdrawals from accounts. Hence, the latest relaxation has been announced to increase cash supply. Also, the government has slashed levies on point-of-sale machines that are being used for merchants by merchants I'm sorry, in the wake of currency crunch post-demonetization. The machines have been made cheaper now by about 16.5%. A notification of this effect was tabled by the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley in Lok Sabha yesterday. The POS machines will now be exempted from 12.5% uh, excise duty and 4% special additional duty till the 31st of March 2017. About 90% of these machines are imported. There has been a spurt in demand of POS machines on account of cash crunch following the scrapping of high-value currency notes of 500,000 rupees by the government with effect from the midnight of 8th of November. Meanwhile, Trinamool Congress Chief and West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee will participate in a sit-in organized by the party in Lucknow to protest the centre's demonetization move. TMC Vice President and Rajya Sabha MP Mukul Roy was in the city on, uh, in fact, to review the preparations and said that the sit-in is aimed at garnering the support of the people who are affected by demonetization against the move. The party has also planned similar protests in Patna, Odessa, Northeast, Punjab and other state capitals to press the rollback of demonetization. Mamata Banerjee, who arrived in Lucknow on Monday, was received by Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav. यूपी देश में यूपी इतना एक एक धरती है जो धरती हमारा देश में बहुत सारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर बनाया अभी भी इधर से ही प्राइम मिनिस्टर भी है लेकिन आज जो चल रहा है जनता इसमें खुश नहीं है इसी के लिए दो चार बात कहने के लिए हम आई हुए हैं ये धरना उनका है धरना तो उनका है ना तो बिल्कुल अच्छी बात है सब रहेंगे उसमें आप रहेंगे हम क्यों रहेंगे धरना तो है ना धरना opposition parties observed the Jan Akrosh Divas on Monday with countrywide protests against the government's demonetization move. However, with different parties leading separate marches, there was a mixed impact of the rally. Uh, though, of course, states like Kerala and Tripura experienced a shutdown of the call given by the left front. As part of the Jan Akrosh Divas called by the opposition, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi led a group of MPs in staging a protest against the government on the demonetization issue. MPs from the Congress, RJD, NCP, DMK and the CPIM protested in front of the Gandhi statue outside Parliament, demanding more steps by the government to ease the problems being faced by people due to the sudden currency ban. One twenty-five crore people of this country are facing acute problem. We are expressing that. Congress is doing it its own way. But if you see the house, you keep on watching the house, everyone is raising the voice of the people that the country is facing a very, very uncomfortable, painful situation where money is there, but they are unable to take it because of the government policy. Our demand is that the people who are in the house are in the house or in the house are in the house. The people who are in the house are in the house. The people who are in the house are in the house. We are in the house. Large-scale opposition protests were also held across India. While some cities witnessed protest marches and rallies, others had to face a complete shutdown. In Delhi, the left front led the protest on the streets, demanding an extension on the use of old currency notes. Until you have a vehicle-pick note, you have a whole notes. Until 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 you have a whole notes. जो आपके कैश ट्रांजैक्शंस के उसको उसके ऊपर पाबंदी हटाओ और लोगों को अपनी जिंदगी जीने दो। Demonstrations were also held in Mumbai, Hyderabad, Jammu and Patna. In some cities, protesters were also detained. In West Bengal, two separate rallies were held, one led by the Left Front and the other spearheaded by Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee. The 
maximum impact, however, was seen in Kerala, which witnessed a complete shutdown. In neighboring Tamil Nadu, the opposition DMK had protest against demonetization. Party leader MK Stalin was even taken into preventive custody for a brief while. In Bihar, Congress workers staged a rail roco agitation. However, the protests had little impact with the JDU keeping away. Although overall the countrywide protests had little or no impact, the shutdown called by the left front affected normal life in many cities. Transport services took a major hit, causing inconvenience to the common man. जब से मैं देख रहा हूँ ये हर ताल की वजह से बहुत सारी पब्लिक ऐसे ही बहुत परेशान है तो मैं तो यही चाहूँगा कि ये किस वजह से भी हर ताल शुरू हुई है जल्द से जल्द खत्म होनी चाहिए। Reason for this हर ताल is maybe genuine, but for the people like us, it is very difficult for to maintain this day-to-day life today. Countering the opposition's campaign in many cities, BJP workers observed the Jan Abhar Divas by offering flowers and sweets to people in support of the government's demonetization move. With inputs from Kriti Mishra, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. With a quick break here, we'll be back with more news in a bit. Stay with us. Down the ages, jewellery has been the pride of the Indian culture. In the Harappan period, it attained perfection in flattened gold bands. From the Mauryan period came the exquisite gold brooches. Many ornaments were an extension of religious practices, like the Gauri Shankaram Rudraksh necklace worn by the temple priest. Rings with lids preserved the Tavis that held secret messages and sometimes even poison. Welcome back. Some more national news and terrorists have attacked an army unit in Nagrota in Jammu and Kashmir. The attack took place at 5.30 a.m. this morning. Two Jawans have been injured is the re latest report that we're getting and the firing is still ongoing. Administration has ordered shutting down of schools after the exchange of fire between army and terrorists in the area. This is a developing story that we'll be tracking here. Now, the Punjab delegation led by Chief Minister Prakash Singh Bhatla and the Haryana delegation led by Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar met President Pranab Mukherjee on Monday at his residence and asked him to resolve the differences over the S.Y.L. Canal issue after the Supreme Court's verdict favoured Haryana. Khattar, who was the first to visit the Rashtrapati Bhavan, asked the President to ensure that the Apex Court verdict is implemented so that Haryana gets its due. Meanwhile, Badr declared that the central government has no role in water disputes while stressing that Punjab's agriculture sector would be severely affected if the verdict is implemented since the centre is heavily dependent on the state for the National Food Security Act to function. The delegation from Punjab, however, sought the president to not accept any advice that goes against the basic principle. The Apex Court had termed the law passed by Punjab in 2004 to terminate the SYL Canal Water Sharing Agreement with neighbouring states unconstitutional. Mahodai ke paas sabhi ek pratanayi vandal sabhi dalon ka Haryana ki janta ki or se aajam ko milke aaye hain ke apni mehtkun bhoomi ka ko nibhate huye aur is nirnay ko lagu karaye taake Haryana ko SYL ke madhyam se jo apna share hai पानी का वो सब मिले इस निर्णय के लागू होने से ही हरियाणा की जनता और मैं यहां तक कहूंगा कि क्योंकि हमारा एक फेडरल स्ट्रक्चर है इस देश का संविधान के हिसाब से ही सब आ, सारा शासन प्रक्रिया सब चलती है सुप्रीम कोर्ट के एक कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच ने ये निर्णय किया है और उस निर्णय के अनुसार जो पंजाब की असेंबली ने हमारे एग्रीमेंट को निरस्त किया था वो एक्ट पंजाब का कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने उसको रद्द किया है और अब निश्चित रूप से वो पानी हरियाणा का हिस्सा हरियाणा को मिले और हम हरियाणा का हिस्सा जो है वही पानी लाने के लिए कह रहे हैं इसमें पंजाब का कोई पानी लेने की बात नहीं है मैं दुख न कहना पैदा है कि पंजाब नाल शुरू तो ही बहुत वर्डिया बेनसाफिया हुई धार्मिक बेनसाफिया भी हुई है पोलिटिकल भी हुई है और सियासी भी हुई है पानी का मसला जोड़ा है ये बहुत गंभीर मसला है जो अज देश की फूड सिक्योरिटी है वो पंजाब से निर्भर है और पंजाब वो भी ड्यूटी ता दे रहा है 
ਕਿ ਉਹਦੇ ਕੋਲੇ ਪਾਣੀ ਹੈ ਪਾਣੀ ਇੱਕ ਸਟੇਟ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਨੈਚੁਰਲ ਰਿਸੋਰਸ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਸਟੇਟ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਨਾ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਉਹ ਕੁਦਰਤ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ now in the naba jail break case khalistan liberation force chief harvinder singh mintu was sent to a 7 day police custody by a delhi court on monday i'm sorry mintu was nabbed from the delhi railway station a day after he escaped with five other inmates from the prison punjab police said that mintu was in touch with terror groups in pakistan and that the dreaded terrorists would be subjected to intensive interrogation when he would be brought from delhi after his remand period was over the alleged mastermind of the daring daylight jailbreak parminder singh was also sent to a 14 day judicial custody in a court at kerana in shamli during interrogation parminder told police that eight persons were involved in the incident and that five fugitives were in karnal and panipat in search of a hideout the police are on a high alert in delhi haryana up and uttarakhand as a manhunt continues to nab the escapees on monday the uttarakhand police arrested two persons for allegedly providing logistical support to the gangsters involved in the nabha jailbreak case meanwhile punjab congress chief minister captain amrinder singh wrote to home minister rajnath singh demanding the dismissal of the prakash singh badal led government he also demanded a cbi probe into the incident saying that a fair investigation would not be possible under the punjab police punjab's deputy chief minister sopir badal however labeled the jailbreak as an unfortunate incident and said that the law and order situation in the state was under control law and order punjab mein sabse behtar hai punjab ki state ek aisi state hai most peaceful state hai pichle 7-8 saal mein aapne dekha hoga yahan aisi koi waradat nahi hui ye bada ek unfortunate incident hua hai humne jo jail superintendent aur jail ke officers unko suspend bhi kar diya hai aur dismiss kar diya naukri se unko investigation chal rahi hai और जो मेन कॉन्स्पिरेटर था जिसने ये भगाए थे उसको भी हमने यूपी से पकड़ लिया और जो मेन टेरिस भागा था उसको हमने दिल्ली से पकड़ लिया और बाकी के पीछे अब पुलिस पड़ी है इंटरनेशनल न्यूज़ एंड ट्रिब्यूट्स कंटिन्यू टू पोर इन फॉर फिदेल कास्ट्रो कंसीडर्ड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट वर्ल्ड लीडर्स ऑफ द 20th सेंचुरी हाउएवर मोस्ट कंट्रीज अपार्ट फ्रॉम द लैटिन अमेरिकन नेशंस विल बी सेंडिंग मिडिल रैंकिंग डेलीगेशंस फॉर द फ्यूनरल सेरेमनी ऑफ फिदेल कास्ट्रो एज टॉप लीडर्स हैव ऑप्टेड आउट India will be represented by Home Minister Rajnath Singh. Thousands of Cubans paid final respects to revolutionary leader Fidel Castro at Havana's Revolution Square on Monday. The government has invited people to the square for a two-day commemoration that started with a 21-gun salute heard throughout the capital city Havana. A large photograph of the Cuban leader now overlooks the Revolution Square. where a memorial service will be held on Tuesday. Yo pienso que no haya ningún cambio que todo continúe como hasta ahora porque el pueblo apoya el socialismo, apoya a a su dirigente. Sigue todo igual porque él nos preparó para eso. Nos venía preparando hace muchos años. Y todos los que nacimos eh con la revolución tenemos que seguir luchando por ella. Bueno, hoy es un día para mí doloroso. porque hemos perdido a nuestro comandante en jefe físicamente porque lo tenemos y lo tendremos siempre en el corazón that the legacy of fidel castro is felt far beyond the island of cuba was on full display in quito as ecuadorians gathered outside the national theater for a tribute concert Castro was an inspirational figure for much of Latin America and parts of the world that struggled against colonial rule. While Cuban embassies paid homages to Castro, world leaders including US President Barack Obama, Russian President Vladimir Putin, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and British Prime Minister Theresa May will not attend Castro's funeral on December 4. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh will lead the eight-member Indian delegation to attend pre-funeral commemoration of Castro. The multi-party delegation will leave for Havana on Wednesday and is expected to return on Thursday evening. In the statement, the Secretary General said that President Fidel Castro will be remembered for his leadership of the Cuban Revolution and for advances in Cuba in the fields of education, literacy and health. His revolutionary ideals left few indifferent. and in the secretary general went on to add that he hopes that cuba will continue to advance on a path of reform greater prosperity and human rights castro was cremated on saturday and a 9 day period of mourning declared 
His cremated ashes will be laid to rest at Santiago de Cuba, the birthplace of the revolution when the mourning period ends on December 4. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And meanwhile, U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has threatened to end the U.S. thaw with Cuba unless Havana makes concessions on human rights and opens up its economy. In a tweet, Trump said, if Cuba is unwilling to make a better deal for the Cuban people, the Cuban-American people and the U.S. as a whole, I will terminate the deal. Trump's hardline came just a day after his senior advisors promised to strike a better deal with the communist rule island after former leader Fidel Castro's death without stating how this might affect the historic rapprochement begun under U.S. President Barack Obama. While prominent Republicans have blasted Castro as a murderous tyrant since his death on Friday, no one close to Trump had directly threatened to end the political opening announced in 2014 by Obama and his Cuban counterpart Raul Castro until Trump's, today, until Trump's uh, tweet. In fact, his team has said that the outgoing Democratic administration made too many concessions to Havana notably by easing the 1962 U.S. economic embargo without receiving enough concessions in areas like human rights, democracy, and the move towards a free market economy. And staying with the U.S., officials have said that a man who injured 11 people, one critically, in fact, in a rampage at the Ohio State University, was of Somali descent and a student on campus. Abdul Razak Ali Artan, who is 18 years old, rammed his car into a group of pedestrians at the college and then got out and began stabbing people before police shot him dead. The police chief said that they were investigating whether the incident was a terror attack. Many police vehicles were at the scene. Police also blocked off roads around the perimeter of the campus, blocking, in fact, the area's traffic. The FBI joined the inquiry at the 60,000 student campus in Columbus. According to reports, Artan was a Somali refugee who was living in the U.S. as a legal permanent resident. About 9.52 a.m., a male suspect drove a vehicle over the curb, west 19th, west of College Avenue, struck pedestrians. He exited the vehicle and used a butcher knife to start cutting pedestrians. Our officers was on scene in less than a minute, and he ended the situation less than a minute. He engaged the suspect, and he eliminated the threat. The suspect is DOA. The president was briefed this morning by uh, Lisa Monaco, who is his top Homeland Security advisor. Uh, the president asked to be updated uh, on the investigation. Uh, I know that local law enforcement officials have indicated uh, that the situation uh, in Columbus uh, is uh, no longer active. Uh, the, the, the site has been secured. Well, that's what we have for you on The Breakfast News for now. Have a good day.